So this is gonna be a real quick down and dirty video on race prepping a GPS file. And we're gonna use the upcoming 2021 Best in the Desert Vegas to Reno race. Uh, they just put the files up on their website. So we're just gonna show you how to import that file and race prep it so you can go out and run lead nav come race day. With this first phase, it's gonna be a real quick import and uh, we're gonna turn the track into a route and you're good to go and it'll be just like any other GPS unit. Uh, phase two, we're gonna save the background map imagery using the Pro subscription so that when you go out the door without cell or data or Wi-Fi, you actually see background map imagery uh, behind the race course. If you don't have a Pro subscription or if you don't wanna do this next step, that's fine. You're just gonna go out the door and race like you would with a traditional GPS unit and you're just gonna have a blank gray background uh, with all your GPS uh, uh, routes and waypoints up front, uh, no big deal. Uh, phase three, we're gonna go in and we're gonna actually enter in some notes, some waypoints, uh, so that they get read out loud and shown visually as you're racing. Uh, we're gonna go into the route and edit it. And uh, on this type of race, there's no pre-running, uh, but you can get a lot from just staring at the map, staring at the imagery. So we're gonna put in the, you know, the left turn, right turns, and definitely put in the speed zones and the pit stops. Uh, so that way, when you go race, you're going to at least get shown the distance and the time to hit those waypoints. Um, again, if you don't do that, it's just going to be like a traditional GPS where you just see waypoints on the screen, uh, the ones that they give you, rally markers and pits. Um, you're not going to be shown or it's not going to announce anything to you. Um, so this is like all extra credit after that point. Anyway, enough run in my mouth. I'm coming at you from my mobile office, as you can see. It's not really a sexy video, but this is an important video, and I want to get this out there. Uh, folks ask us all the time, are you going to make a race file? Are you going to give us a race file for this race or that race? LeadNav is a GPS. We don't try to be anything but a better GPS unit. Uh, you can use this GPS for anything you do. Uh, it's as simple as importing GPX files into it and prepping those files yourself and going out the door. Uh, but again, this is gonna be a real quick down and dirty video for one of the most common questions we get. How do I prep the file for race day? All right, I have my iPad Pro sitting here with a keyboard attached to it, and I'm just gonna switch over to a full screen on this. All right, so we're gonna go over to the internet. We're gonna pull up Best in the Desert, and we are going to go to the Vegas to Reno race. And if you go to their website, you can see they have uh, Lawrence GPS files and GPX GPS file. Honestly, there's only one file that they really need to hand out, and that's a GPX. Lawrence actually takes GPX as well, but they like to put out the USR file, which is the proprietary format of Lawrence. But again, all GPS units, including LeadNav, run a GPX file. So we're gonna to go to that GPX GPS file and we're gonna to choose to download it. And it's gonna download it to your uh, file browser or your file app. And we're gonna go into your file app and unzip that and you'll see it's a folder in there. And inside the folder, they have two files. We're gonna open up the track file and we're gonna import this as a new collection. Uh, you have the option of importing into an existing collection, and we like to keep everything separated. So we're gonna make this its own collection. As you import it, you can see collection imported. We successfully imported zero routes, one track, and zero markers. Uh, this file, they just uh, chose to separate the two. I don't know why, but we're gonna rename this file 2021 Vegas to Reno. Make it a little bit easier on us. And we're gonna take that track, take a look at it. Yep, it actually looks pretty, pretty decent. And we're gonna go ahead and import their waypoint file. Uh, we call these markers. And we're gonna import those into the existing 2021 Vegas to Reno collection. And boom, there, you see all the 
waypoints came in. And again, we call these markers because they're not part of a route. They're, they're floating in space. We're gonna convert this track into a route. Uh, a track is just a breadcrumb of where you've been. Uh, it has no functionality to it. You can't run it, you can't get navigation from it, you can't edit the file. Again, the route looks pretty clean. Sometimes you'll see, uh, depending on the race organization, uh, sometimes it's a mess. Sometimes it's multiple tracks. Sometimes there's a lot of bird's nests. Sometimes the, there's a, what we call spider webbing where they had individual track segments and they tried to connect them together and they're going in different directions. And when they connected them, uh, this kind of matters in lead nav because it has to be a, a, a straight line. Uh, otherwise it won't navigate correctly. Uh, but this file looks like Best in Desert did a good job with this one. Looks clean. And that's it, folks. That's all you need to do uh, for bringing a GPS file into Lead Nav and run it just like you would a traditional GPS. We will call this phase one. You can go into your menu on this file, race day, and hit run, and it'll navigate that, that route line to the end. Just like a traditional GPS unit, there's gonna be no imagery at this point in the background, no map imagery. It's just gonna be a blank gray screen. Uh, you have to use one of the subscriptions to download and save that background map imagery so you can borrow it for your trip if you're going to a place without cell or Wi-Fi. And that's what we're gonna show you in phase two. In uh, doing this, you're gonna need the pro subscription and we're gonna use the save along route feature in that. So here we go. Go into the lead nav settings and we are going to, uh, in this case, we're gonna to wanna to pull some satellite map imagery. So let's use uh, Esri World Imagery. Every uh, map type in there with a cloud next to it is something you could borrow and download for offline use. And you can see the, that map imagery is loading up in the background through our internet. And you can kind of see what kind of quality you get down to the zoom you wanna maybe take. Looks pretty good down the 18 zoom for this area. So we're gonna go back in there and we're gonna go download. So we're gonna actually touch on the cloud with the down arrow on it. And you're gonna get the download window popped up. And we are going to use a pro feature called save along route. At the beginning of every track or route, every line basically, uh, you have the option, uh, there's another cloud there with a down arrow to download uh, that uh, route's map imagery behind it. So we're gonna choose, uh, we're gonna use the scroll, we're gonna choose 18 zoom, that's all the way down. And we're gonna, don't get greedy with this, or it's gonna crash or take forever. Let's go 250 meters on either side of that route line and save. You can see you get the download uh, pop up. And at this point, you do not wanna touch it you don't want to, you just want to have this thing sitting in your living room or in your hotel on good Wi-Fi, and you're going to see it's going to start caching along the route. Uh, depending on your Wi-Fi, this could take a while. Uh, but again, this is a, what, a 500 or 400 mile route, and you're saving, right now we're saving 18 zoom along the entire line underneath of it, and 250 meters on either side of that line. And you can see a blue square around the perimeter of everything. That's kind of just like a 13 to 14 zoom overview tile so you can find it easily when you're running around out there without cell data. Because every other place around this area is just gonna be a gray, uh, is gonna be a gray blank background. Um, now, if you had cell out there or data or Wi-Fi, just run the basic lead nav app and you're gonna see maps in the background coming through your cell network but this is a pro feature if you want to borrow these for offline use. So you can see we're getting up to like one. I'm going to, I'm going to click somewhere and stop this. Say, say it crashed out or something. Well, you can see it, you can scroll out and it just has an incomplete next to it. And if we zoom in, you can see along the route, it started to cache everything blue. Let me, there you go. And that's where it stopped. So we're going to, uh, Zoom out, and if you actually click on the uh, incomplete label, you can get the option to resume download. So if you're at an event, 
say like some races, they don't give you this file until race day and you're in a hotel and the, and the Wi-Fi is not that great. Well, obviously the pro feature and having this auto save along route saves you a lot of time. Um, again, it might crash out. It might, uh, you know, depending on the Wi-Fi, it might drop. Well, you can always go back in and just hit complete and resume it where it left off till you get up to 100%. Depending on your Wi-Fi, this might take some time. We are going to fast forward a bit. All right, hit 100%, it is now complete. So you can see we have our uh, area overview, blue around it, it's probably about 14 zoom all the way around that area, 13 to 14 zoom. And we have our 18 zoom, 250 meters on either side saved along the actual course. If you're a chase vehicle or you know part of the chase crew, and you're going to be in operating in areas without cell service, you might want to go and save some areas out, you know, around where the pits are and stuff like that and higher zoom so you can get to the uh, race course from, say, the highway. So we are going to go into some of these little towns and we're going to choose a square area of 18 zoom and save out each one uh, that we want. See, I'm going to choose this town right here and I'm just going to choose a square and you can see in the bottom right, it says max zoom. That's the max zoom of that square that's gonna save. So if you, again, get greedy and you make that tile bigger, you'll see that max zoom on the bottom right go down. It'll go down to 18, 17, 16. Uh, you're allowed to save a one gig area with the pro subscription. So as you see that estimated area size climb and it hit one gig, you'll see that max zoom uh, drop down a level. So again, if you want 18 zoom, make the tile as big as you can and keeping it at 18 zoom, hit save and watch it download. We go up to the next town and we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna save an 18 zoom tile around that area. And another tile around this town. Now any, uh, you know, if you save this 18 zoom tile and you hit the edge of it out there and you don't have cell, again, it's going to be blank. It's going to be gray in the background. So save out. You can also save out uh, if you want uh, 15 zooms, pretty good for getting around for the chase crew. So if you want to save larger 15 zoom tiles, uh, that's a good idea uh, to kind of just get a, get yourself around the race course. We're gonna back out and now we're gonna let the delete cache climb. We're gonna see how much that's stored. So there you go, 9.4 gigabytes in five areas. And if you want to go through and take some different map types, you can. And we'll call that phase two complete. So if this was a race that we had a chance to pre-run, we would save out this map entry to help us out on the pre-run, to kind of help us find hotlines and stuff like that in the field. Come race day, if we had solid notes, generally we would just turn off the map imagery in the background, run our bright red race line in the foreground, and, uh, and not have that clutter of map imagery sticking out or, or blocking our view in the background. Uh, we just want to see our nice notes coming down the uh, route line with a gray background. Uh, but in this case, it's a, it's a race where you cannot pre-run, so you might want to run map imagery in the background as a co-pilot to kind of see what's coming up ahead. Uh, it's also good for the chase crews to have that map imagery, obviously, so they can box around and get to the race course if needed or uh, find their pits. But again, that's it. That's phase two right there. If you got up to that point, extra credit, you got map imagery in the background, and now you're starting to take advantage of the uh, benefits of lead nav over a traditional GPS unit. So phase three. Phase three, sometimes the uh, race organizers will put out a danger list. Uh, we would go in here and uh, find the mile marker. Uh, we'd go in the routes, edit, to edit the route file. And you can see we can scroll around the route and down here on the bottom, you'll see total distance of the course is 489 miles. And you can hold the crosshairs on the route itself and get the distance. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and turn these markers into waypoints. So we're gonna point the crosshairs at the route line 
and we're gonna drop in a speed zone. This way we will get these audio and visually as we're racing. If you did not put anything in the race course, all you're gonna get is, you know, in 400 miles, a stop sign. That's all you're gonna see the entire race. You're not gonna see any uh, distances to any of these points along the way because they're not part of the route. We have to physically go in and add them in as waypoints into the actual route file to get navigation to these points. And you can see right here, I can obviously see a left turn, so I'm gonna drop in a left turn. You can do a lot, you can go through this entire course, seeing all the stay rights, stay lefts, hard rights, and you can enter those if you wish. We're gonna put the pits in. I like to put a stop sign. And this one has obviously a speed zone going into it. So we're gonna put speed zone entering pit one. And we're gonna get that shown to us as we're racing as the distance in ETA. And you're gonna get that visually and audible over your headsets if you're connected. I like to put the end of speed zone. If this is a really long speed zone, I like to put a couple of waypoints in the middle of that, you know, saying maintain 25, maintain 25, just to kind of visually see that on the screen. And we're gonna go through this entire course and do this. Here's another uh, speed zone, we would enter that one, and you get the idea. You could go through here and put as many notes as you want shown to you. We're gonna go ahead and rename this route, race ready, kind of clean it up. And that way, come race day, all you have to do is open up this collection, open up routes, choose race ready, and hit run. That's it, folks. That's three phases. You can choose how deep you wanna go with any of the phases. It doesn't matter. Uh, phase one, you can see how to import a race file in the lead nav uh, compared to other GPSs is really quick and easy. Uh, you can have it done in two or three minutes. Uh, phase two, saving out the map imagery. Again, using the pro pack and the save along route feature. It's, it's minimal time on your part, but you're gonna have to let the iPad sit and let it download and it's gonna depend on your Wi-Fi connection how long that takes. Uh, phase three is where it takes a little bit of time. Uh, if this race finally does put out a danger list, uh, what they do is they put out uh, a danger or extreme danger and they put a mile marker up with it. And you, you basically have to, in route editor, scroll along the route, find the mileage, and then hand jam in every danger into the route. Uh, if it's a long race, if they give you a lot of dangers, this could take hours. You know, I've, I've worked on the Baja 1000 files for four to five hours. Uh, on the danger list that they hand out, uh, entering in all the speed zones and everything else that they give you uh, so you have all that race day. I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but there is a phase four, and that's using a lot of uh, other things and tools that are available, uh, like Google Earth. Uh, you can actually go through and kind of fly the course and see terrain, and that way you can even add more detail into the course Obviously, you can see stay left, stay rights, hard lefts, hard rights. But with Google Earth and with some terrain, you can put in downhill, hard left. Uh, you can see those off camber turns and you can enter those as well. Again, that stuff, getting the audio and the visual waypoints is what takes time and prep. And the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Um, but again, this is just a quick down and dirty on how to race prep files. You can do whatever phase you want, and uh, I hope that helps. Everybody have a safe race. Later.